Hello everybody. Let me show you the new features in MPS 2020.3. You can expect improvements in many areas. Uh, the version control dialog has been improved, the user interface has been enhanced, and you can expect a new macro in the generator. So let's go through this in detail. So look at this code. So this Java class has been changed. The two lines have been removed and two lines have been added to the code. But if you look carefully, you realize that's basically the same line, just put to a different place in code. So now the div dialog has the capability to track nodes that have moved in the, in the code. So instead of showing you what has been removed and added, you, you, you can see that these two nodes have been moved from one place to the other and you can deal with it this way. And it, for some collections where the order of nodes is not important for the meaning of the code, you can even hide changes like that. That's because the collection of members in a classifier is marked as unordered. So the order is not important, thus, so you, you, you can hide moving nodes uh, in that collection. Now here's another one. The code you see here is uh, code that has been deleted and retyped again. So technically in the abstract syntax tree, there are new nodes in the tree. So effectively, you might look as, you know, at the code as, you know, code that has changed. But in reality, the code is exactly the same. It's just the IDEs of the nodes are different. So the dialog can now hide this. So if a node is just the same node as before, which is with a different ID because you retimed that node, you can hide these changes and they will not bother you in the dialog anymore. As you probably expect, these can be combined. So if you change the code and move the code, uh, the dialog will allow you to visualize the changes properly. So for example, you know, if you change to the lines that have been moved, um, basically retyping things, so it's not the changes as such, but these are the things that can be hidden. Now if you look at the div dialog, well no change visible because they are all sort of filtered out by the settings. So if you enable, the, you know, if you want to see moves and you want to see the retypings of things, you see them. If you hide moves, you only see the, uh, the things uh, that have been retyped. You know that at MPS models, references are mere pointers to the abstract syntax tree. So when you rename a definition, it doesn't really have any impact on the references. So the dialog also allows you to hide the changes, the vis sort of visual changes to the references and only see the changes in the, in the definitions. This makes the dialog less cluttered, in my opinion. Speaking of definitions and references, the MPS editor has been enhanced to automatically highlight all references pointing to the same declaration. So you put your cursor on a reference and within a short delay, the other references as well as the definition itself get highlighted as well. So it is somewhat similar to the shortcut that visualizes all references within the same file and then you can use F3 to navigate around the file, but this, this one works automatically without any extra shortcut you should press. The way the logical panel shows errors has changed considerably. Now in the options menu you have several settings in an in error and warning submenu that allow you to visualize errors and warnings in certain ways. First of all, you can show visual indicators next to the nodes that have errors and warnings in them and when you click you get a pop-up with uh, the error description then you can uh, allow underlining of nodes with errors so then the nodes that have some warning on an error on them are, are underlined in a yellow or red color in addition to that you can have an error stripe next to these indicators where that you see in clickable colorful lines. You click on them and the, the view scrolls to the error or to the warning. Well, and in addition to that, you can show only errors, not to get distracted by warnings. 
and you can see our project doesn't have any errors in it. And now to the generator enhancement. The new macro called call site is useful in situations when you need to refer to the node that is wrapped with a switch or a template from within the template. Now, here's an example. The reduce expression template uh, is triggered on a node that needs to be actually reused inside that reduce expression template. And it has some uh, macros applied to it, like a reference macro that will replace this reference with some other reference. And then there's a property macro for the parameter. So inside of the inside the reduce expression template, uh, we're using the new call site macro to insert the context node from the template that uh, triggered this. You know that call this template. Um, for this to work, it, well, this template has to have the call the the call site macro enabled by setting a flag on the template itself. By default, you know the context node is not not passed in, but if you want to use call site macro inside a template, you need to use an intention to actually set it on. And as soon as you do that, the call site macro ensures that in this location, in this particular template, the contextual node, after having all the macros applied to it, will be inserted into the code. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you will enjoy the new release of MPS. Goodbye.